last time, this video, we're going to look at getting into a command line like DigitalOcean or your university, your business, or home server, some server somewhere using an iPad or an iPhone or really any iOS device. They all work the same way. We're going to look at two special apps that will do this. The first one we're going to look at is called Termius, and the second one is called Blank. And we'll be looking at both of these more in the future. I use them all the time. But basically, they're just two different apps that you get through the App Store. And we'll look at that now. OK, so as you can see here, we've got my iPad Pro screen. And it has all the usual apps on it. But down in the bottom right-hand corner are two special apps, Termius and Blink. These are two different terminal apps. You probably only need one, but we're going to look at both of them. Termius is free. You can download it for free and use it. It also has a subscription option, but the subscription option has features that I've never needed. I've never bought it. I just use the free version. It works great. Blink, on the other hand, there's no free version and it's $20. It's one of the more expensive iPad apps, but it's also the best terminal emulator software you're going to find. It's really, really good. But we'll look at both of them. We'll start with Termius now. Just click on Termius, and it brings up a list of any hosts you may have configured. Uh, that first one there is an IP number. It's, it's my Plex server. The other one is the DigitalOcean. We'll try that. Just click on it, and it'll log right in. It knows the password. It just goes in there and logs in, and there's my stuff. Edit files. You can do Vim. You can do Emacs. I mean, we haven't talked about Vim or Emacs yet, but they work. They, they do all the usual things. And that's it. I mean, you do all the usual stuff that way. It works great. And again, it's free. There is some configure. You, if you don't have a keyboard built in, you can get these on-screen keyboards that has all the special function keys and arrows, escape, and all that stuff. It's very convenient. There's a quick little quick keyboard here at the bottom that I'm scrolling around. And it's really nice. It does a lot of things. As far as configuration, you have settings. You could put in your credentials, your name, and your password. It does SSH keys, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will. Uh, it has several built-in fonts and themes, which I'm not a real big fan of the themes that they've got. But they do have them. The one I'm using right now is Solarized, which is that sort of dark bluish looking thing. You can also go with Termius Light if you want light themes. And I probably have to log out before that takes, in, takes effect. And there's the light theme. Just depends on what you like. And that's Termius. Again, there you can look at it and see the different paid options, but unless you're really, really advanced, needing to move around to multiple machines in real life and sync things around, you probably don't need the paid option. But that's Termius. Option number one. Option number two is Blink, which doesn't come up with any kind of configuration, doesn't come up with any kind of list of anything. You just get this little thing that says Blink up in the top corner. To get into the configuration options, you type config, and it brings up the different settings where you can do the same things. SSH keys, usernames and passwords, and so forth. It also has themes. Uh, they're all, you know, they, they, it, it has themes. Not that many of them. Uh, about half of these came with it. The others are installed from this little option down here to add a new theme. And there are a lot of themes out there. Pretty much any, if you're using any kind of standard theme, you can use it with this one. They, they have them all. You can choose your font. It comes with, I don't know, half a, it's eight or nine of them there. Plus, you can add a new font, which is also nice. If you're pretty technical and you're, you know what you're doing with the fonts, there are, they do have the power line fonts in there also, which makes a lot of things like Vim and Emacs and things like that look really nice. Set your font and other options. But you don't need that. I've got it all set up. So here I am with the blank shell. 
And you, you can do various commands right here on the iPad without going anywhere else. And there's a list of them on screen. You can uh, do the date. You can use Telnet if you want to go that down that route. Uh, got a lot of different things. But I'm going to... It's got auto-completion. The domain I want to go to is Amazing Serials. If I type A, tab, it'll type that in for me. It knows these things. I hit Enter, and it logs me in because I have my SSH keys all ready to go. And now I'm in just like before. And there's all that same stuff. Vim. Yeah, it's not the greatest theme on there. But as you can see down at the bottom line, it does have those power line, special power line graphics characters in, installed. And I don't have anything real fancy in my Emacs there, but it'll, it'll do that too. Again, the configuration is really nice, especially with the themes. Um, I'll just change the theme. It doesn't really take an effect until after you get into something, but once you do... Okay, so that is Blink. Uh, again, that one's $20. You probably want to go with Termius until you get really used to it and decide you need something more. I went with Blink just because it looks so much better with the fonts. The fonts are very nice. The themes are very nice. I'm not so technical with it that I need a lot of the networking features, but I spend a lot of time using this. So I want it to look nice, have you know, be attractive in retina fonts and all that stuff. And it's easily the best looking of the bunch. Termius. It's great, it works, but it's not that fancy. Uh, both the apps will work from your iPhone. So if you're out on out and about somewhere and you need to get into your terminal somewhere to change something or fix a file, there are iPhone apps that do the same thing with the on-screen keyboard. Again, with that little little keyboard on the iPhone, it's not a lot of fun. You probably wouldn't want to spend a lot of time in it. But for quick fixes, it's there and it works. So that's how you get online into a terminal with iPad, iPhone, or any iOS device. And next week, I have a video to get up showing you some fun stuff that you can do. Finally, we're getting into the actual apps. See you next week.